Well, we are here with NASCAR Xfinity Series JRM Crew Chief Taylor Moyer, Crew Chief for that number eight car at Junior Motorsports. We're kind of here to, to break down some of the things that I've heard over your radio the last couple of weeks and uh, learn a little bit more about the inside of NASCAR. So, Taylor, man, I appreciate you taking time. I appreciate you having me, Andrew. Uh, I'll give you all the secrets I can without giving you too many. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, absolutely. I first want to follow up on a conversation when you were on our podcast last year. Um, it was so, so interesting to hear what you had to say about how much variables you guys are working with every single race weekend. And so we were talking about when to pit and this is the first thing that's on my list and an important thing especially at homestead this past weekend when you guys uh, had to pit a couple times over green um what kind of variables are you looking at when it comes to pitting are you looking at tire wear are you looking at what the rest of the field is doing you know people in front of you like what are some of the things that you're looking at uh to ahead of a pit stop so number one in our series we have limited tires uh, you know we do not have as many sets as the Nas as the cup series so the first big question, I guess, is, well, the first big question is, do you have enough fuel to make it, right? So there's some races from the end of stage two into, until the end of the race, you can make it on fuel. And it's just a time calculation of, could you physically pit, even though you don't need fuel, because you could you pit, um, get new tires and get back out there? Um, you Most tracks you go a lap down, um, but could you, could you just physically make up that time? Is there enough tire fall off to make up that time and get back around? Usually the answer is no. So, but at a track like Homestead, we could not make it from the end of stage two to the end of the race within the fuel window. So we knew everybody's gonna have to pit. Um, unfortunately, we had to pit sooner than we thought because we blew a right rear and we pitted under green when the rest of the field was under green, which was kind of the worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, but you are thinking a lot of things, uh, me personally, especially with uh no practice rules some none of these guys so there's people in the series who have never done a green flag pit stop which is pretty challenging um one if, if it's your driver josh has never done green flag pit stops or not many so you're at a track where you don't have any marks you have to do a green flag pit stop not speed not give up too much time to the leader um but then there's always that chance that you know when you do a green flag stop that you're probably gonna be lapped down for a couple of laps until it cycles and everybody pits. And if you're lapped down when somebody comes in to do a green flag stop and they wreck, then you're trapped to lap down. So it's a game of, uh, especially at a high fall off track, it's a game of risk versus reward. You know, if you're at a high fall off track, you may be able to pit, get your new tires before a couple laps before somebody else um, and gain that time back on them, but you're gonna risk being a lap down for until they come get their tires. Uh, that happened to me at Dover 2019. Needed a couple points, uh, pitted early, was in the catbird seat in the very last car to pit under green flag, smoked the end of pit wall, caution came out. I didn't have my lap back yet. We got trapped a lap down. Had to take the wave. We we're pretty much even on tires. They had a couple laps newer, but then we have to start at the tail of the field. So yeah, it is a risk versus reward. It's a gambling situation. It's you I mean you're as much betting on yourself as you are as betting on the talent of other people to successfully be able to do a green flag stop and um and not screw screw it up uh homestead was an odd situation that 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 uh that caution fell like right on the edge of the outside of the window and it's the beginning of the year our first mile and a half track and you don't know everybody else's fuel mileage there's some cars that change manufacturers so they have different motors um and you're not sure you're not sure who can make it who can't make it we were on we were on the bubble and you don't know if more cautions are coming so it was a our hand got forced and we had to pit with a flat tire but i don't know how it would have shaken out if there wasn't a late race caution either do different motors affect fuel mileage differently like do does every manufacturer have a basically different fuel window yeah i wouldn't even say you know there's only a couple engine manufacturers left um and it all depends on how, how they tune their intake and their right. carburetor for what fuel mileage they get, right? So, um, you know, within Chevrolet, there's uh, Hendrick Motors and there's ECR Motors. Um, and then there's the Roush Yates Motors and then there's Toyota Motors and they all certainly do. They tune their motors different ways. And um, 
some get better mileage, some have more low end power, some have more high end power. So yeah, you, uh, you don't really know until you get a couple races and get in those situations and you go, oh, okay, they, they just made it farther than we could. We'll, we'll earmark that for next year or next race. Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned you in the Xfinity series have to conserve sets of tires. And I was hearing there were certain radio communications over the race where it's like, oh no, we're gonna stay out. And then the whole field pits and you guys come with them. Cause it's kind of like the field does. You don't want to be the one out. It's like, it, how tough is it? managing a limited set of tires especially at a high wear track yeah it's pretty tough especially the high wear tracks uh, it never fails those cautions will fall you know 10 to 5 laps before a stage end and you're like okay, yeah i can put these tires on and probably get some guaranteed stage points which are mm -hmm. are worth a good bit right there's 20 free points um up in the air that are guaranteed no matter how you finish you know you could finish first in the stage first in the stage and then whatever it would be to get 20 points and get 40 points total and come out the same as the guy who didn't who finished outside top 10 stage one outside top 10 stage two and then won the race so you, you you're playing both games um we had we had more tires than we had last year and we had no competition caution so um mm. i knew you knew you had to probably save a set for your green flag stop in the final stage and then you don't want, most people don't want to be the guy caught with a late race caution and not have a set of tires to put on or you're not gonna be able to compete. So, and then there was a, there's an extra, an extra set. So if a caution fell in one of those stages, you could throw them on. So we chose to do that at the beginning of the end of stage one, threw them on there, drove back to eighth, got some stage points. We then took those tires off, put new tires on at the end of stage one. And we knew we had, uh, you know, nine lap scuff tires uh, if we, if, if, if the need got dire, which it did, we had to put those on at the end.